What's going on guys? Welcome back to another stimulus update. We had a lot of stuff going on the past couple of days. So what I wanna do right now is I actually just wanna give you a quick recap of what's been going on and kind of where both sides are at regarding the stimulus negotiations. We've seen, we've seen two different proposals. There's actually three, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer got rid of theirs. Now there's really just two stimulus proposals. Mitch McConnell's at you know roughly six hundred billion dollars, and then we got the the nine senator group. They're calling the calling the this the emergency relief framework because it's actually not a bill yet. Um, this is for nine hundred eight billion. So let's talk about what's going on. So here's what I want to do in today's video. First off, uh, we're going to address retroactive stimulus because a lot of people have been asking. So I really want to address that. I'm going to address that first. We're going to talk about when the emergency relief framework could actually pass. I wanna give you some timelines there as well. Uh, I'm gonna give you timelines for all of December so we really know when these dates are coming up and what's the most important thing for that date. So make sure you stick around for that. Uh, we also got reports uh, on what is being negotiated behind closed doors uh, on this $908 billion proposal. Um, I wanna fill you in on stimulus checks because we've heard from the Problem Solvers Caucus on stimulus checks and it's it's a little interesting to, to hear what they have to say. So we're gonna talk about that as well. And then also about social security. Those are the things we're gonna address in today's video. So let's get started. First, with stimulus, retroactive stimulus. How does this break down? First, what you need to understand is right now, what's actually, um, what many people are asking is, will we receive retroactive unemployment benefits? That's what everyone's asking. We already know when I when I say retroactive stimulus, there's no retroactive stimulus check in the form of a $1,200 you know, uh, economic payment, okay, direct payment from the treasury. That's not gonna happen. Okay, we already know that. But we could get retroactive stimulus right now based on what's how it's written in the, the $908 billion proposal. There is retroactive um, unemployment checks but it only goes back to December 1st. Well, we're on December 3rd, so it's gonna go back two days. Let's say it passes on December 11th, which many people expect this to pass. That means you're gonna get about, what, 11 days of retroactive unemployment pay? It's not gonna be a lot, but it's something. Also, what is what's currently being um, considered, I guess, based on reports from uh, an aide of Nancy Pelosi's is that she is she's considering putting in an additional month of retroactive unemployment pay so it wouldn't just go back for for december 1st it would go back all the way to november 1st which that would be a little bit better it would help out more people but that means we lost all of september and lost all of october so in that sense it's not great so that's currently what we know regarding retroactive unemployment pay but when it comes to the emergency relief framework and when it's going to pass, what well, you need to understand, like I already said, this is not a bill. And this is what we heard from the Problem Solvers Caucus actually just a little while ago, is that uh, they're gonna have their team working on this. And based on what I heard is it should be available at the end of this weekend. So that means Monday is kind of the day when this, when this proposal will officially be a bill which once it's a bill, then we can vote on. Uh, I guess right now uh, we have the, you know, the the offices are looking at it, making sure you know everything's correct, you know, legally. Um, so we'll see what happens there, but this should happen on Monday. Also, the Problem Solvers Caucus is putting a priority on the details. Right now, they're saying that all parties involved understand that the proper details are going to be key without the proper details, and as Nancy Pelosi calls it, the language, then a deal could easily fall apart. We know this, this has happened before. We do not want it or need it to happen again this close to a deadline. We've already seen it fall apart. We cannot afford to see it fall apart again. So this, this relief framework, this relief bill, the $908 billion could pass next week. Like I said in my video that I did earlier today, it's looking like we will see we will see a vote on this most likely on December 10th. That's next Thursday, so that's in seven days from today. 
Also, right now, reports indicate that the $908 billion proposal is still being negotiated behind closed doors. This is most likely between Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy. And then probably they float a few ideas to President Trump as well from McConnell's office uh, over to President Trump to see if he will sign it. Right now, what we know is President Trump is on board to sign something if Congress can come to an agreement before the end of this year. If it's after January 1st, most likely President Trump will not sign any package whatsoever. We haven't heard that from him, but as of the reports are saying right now, that is most likely going to be the case. Also, Nancy Pelosi, one of the things that she's wanting right now is to include more state and local government funding. She wants to get it up past $160 billion. That's what it stands right now uh, on that $908 billion uh, relief package. So right now, she wants to get a little bit higher, most likely in the, uh, up over $250, $250 billion. But most Re Republicans do not support that and would not support it. $160 billion, maybe $200 billion would probably be their cap. Also, most Democrats believe $600 per week for unemployment benefits is going to be, a, be one of the essential parts to this bill. So that's one of the things that Nancy Pelosi is going to try to request. But again, that's one of the things that most likely won't happen because Republicans say it's just a disincentive to get people back to work when you know, economists and facts say it's not. But again, who, who are we to argue with them, right? Uh, the bill could also see larger unemployment uh, boo uh, a larger unemployment boost per week. As far as $600, I don't think we can get there. I, I don't think there's any way both sides are going to agree on that. What, what current reports are saying is that, could we get to $400 per week? Yes, we could get to $400 per week, but it would require, instead of four months of unemployment benefits, it would actually have to be you know shortened to about three months, okay? Three months of unemployment benefits, that's that's something. but And you'd get more. So you'd really get more over the course of December, January, and February. But then as of March 1st, your unemployment's again, or your boost would completely be gone. So we'll have to see what happens there. But right now, that's what the reports are indicating as to what is being negotiated behind closed doors. Uh, again, these are just reports until we get a, an actual bill you know, a PDF that we can look at or actually hold, it's still kind of up in the air what we're going to see. Now about stimulus checks, because this is, I know everyone asks about stimulus checks. Will we get a stimulus check? During a press conference with the Problem Solvers Caucus, when they were specifically asked, what about stimulus checks? The person asking, they're answering the question, I don't remember who it was, but the person asking the question talked about how they want to get all their priorities. They have a lot of priorities. They have a lot of goals. Everybody wants to put their you know, different you know, pieces and takes onto the proposal. He didn't even say stimulus checks. So when he was specifically asked about stimulus checks, he avoided the question completely. Didn't say anything about stimulus checks. But what they are saying based on reports is that Nancy Pelosi will ask for a stimulus check to be included into the this $908 billion proposal. Here's the problem. Most Republicans, and specifically Republican senators, are completely opposed to going past $900 billion for a bill. We already are at or $908 billion. If Nancy Pelosi wants more state and local government funding, it's gonna go up. Let's say it goes up to about eight, say, say, let's say it goes up to 950. Then she wants a little bit more unemployment benefits. Let's say push it up another 50, that puts us at $1 trillion. Then to add in stimulus checks, that's gonna push it up about to 175 billion. So that's gonna push us up to $1.275 trillion. That is something that right now they're saying Republicans will not support this. And this is exactly what the Problem Solvers Caucus said today is that when they were asked, they said, after talking to many you know, people on both sides of the aisle, on both houses, the House of Representatives and the Senate, we figured and we determined that $900 billion is kind of the, the middle where both parties could agree. 
It's more than Republicans want to offer. It's less than Democrats are willing to accept, but that's the middle. That's the middle ground and that's where they feel everybody could support this and we could get it done before the end of this year. Now, a couple interviews I just watched indicate that stimulus checks will increase the bill too much for Republicans to support this. And so what they're saying is that, and what the Problem Solvers Caucus kind of already alluded to and figured out on their own is that the best way to get a stimulus package done now is to exclude stimulus checks. We're just gonna exclude stimulus checks. We're not gonna include them in this bill, but as soon as the new administration comes in on January 20th, then we'll get back to the table and that will be the time when passing a stimulus check in a package will be the best or most likely scenario. So right now, again, this is this is completely different than what some of the reports were out this morning saying, yes, yeah, stimulus checks are a high priority because that's what some people were saying. That's what some senators are saying is it's still a priority. We need it because if the people don't have money, then how do they go to these businesses and actually you know, pay them for their services or their products? And then the business you know, starts to take off and the economy grows. Because right now what's happening is the, the US government is gonna prop up these different businesses, these small businesses. But without stimulus checks to the American people, who's gonna go and pay for those services? That's the problem. And again, if, if we don't focus on the, the problems as well, and we just provide a quick solution, which is kind of what we're doing, the problems are gonna persist. We'll be back in the same boat very soon. But what these reports are indicating is that the Trump administration wants to push off these problems back onto the Biden administration when they come in and they can handle it. Let them handle it at that point. So again, don't don't hate me. I, I know it's not great news. I'm just a messenger. I'm just trying to get you the facts based on what we know. Now, stimulus checks again are, are a priority. But what is what is being said is that Biden, according to Joe Biden, he would entertain the idea of stimulus checks early on. But again, it would it would all come down to let's negotiate another deal. Let's see how we can come to an agreement on a new stimulus package. Because Joe Biden said, whatever deal gets done now during this lame duck session is just a down payment on the, the next year. So he's, he's planning on coming in with a lot of ideas, proposals, offers, and really you know hit the economy with a lot of funding. So we'll see. But I, I know it's not great news, but this is just a report that's out uh, actually later on this afternoon. So hopefully it changes. Hopefully the report is more optimistic about stimulus checks tomorrow morning, maybe tomorrow afternoon, but again, we'll have to see. I'll keep you updated on that. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so I can continue to keep you updated on all the stimulus uh, negotiation offers, updates, and proposals. But let's get into social security because this is a big thing that a lot of people are asking about as well is what about us on social security? VA benefits, railroad, SSD, ISSI. What about us? How are we going to make it through this, you know, this winter when there's nothing for us, right? We're not getting unemployment benefits. We don't have businesses. We can't get this PPP funding. What do we do? Well, right now, the costs keep increasing for medications and the amount of money people make on social security has not increased. It will increase. You'll get an increase of roughly 1.3% in January, but that's barely anything. That average out on average, across everybody on Social Security, that averages to about $15 to $20 per month as an increase. That's very little, less than a dollar a day, almost 50 cents a day. Now, stimulus checks were supposed to be uh, kind of the, they were supposed to be the way of getting these people some money. This was this was the goal is, okay, if we can pass a stimulus check, then we will be able to provide, you know, some income for people on social security, the elderly. But without social or without stimulus checks, that's not looking likely. And so that's not, that's not great. But Joe Biden, 
he has made it a priority and he has multiple ideas to increase um, Social Security benefits. But again, nothing is going to happen until after January 20th. And in almost every single one of these cases, as far as providing $200 per month in addition to your, your Social Security benefits, this would require Congress to also step in. So right now, I don't wanna get your hopes up, but it looks like there will be something for people on Social Security as far as an increase in benefits or a decrease in costs, but it's not gonna happen until most likely the end of January or possibly sometime in February. So just, just be aware, there is stuff in the works, but it will take time. Now, let's get to the most important dates to remember. Kind of broke these down. We have a handful of them. If you want to write these down, great. If not, don't worry about it. Because uh, I will remind you as we get closer to these dates. First, we have December 5th. December 5th is when Nancy Pelosi should have a counter offer on the table. Whether we see this, this offer or not, I don't know. But this is what the report is saying is that Nancy Pelosi is saying that she should have something you know in the works within 24 hours. Well, that's tomorrow. That's December 4th. But what you need to keep in mind is that, okay, December 4th, she should have her counteroffer in to Mitch McConnell. But we, so I'm pretty much saying December 5th because that's Saturday. I think maybe it comes in tomorrow night and, you know, Mitch McConnell will review it, look at it, and maybe hand it off to, you know, whoever he wants to. But, you know, December 5th, that, that could be a big day. Also, December 7th, this is Monday. This is this coming Monday. This coming Monday is when this $908 billion bill should be complete. We should have an actual draft, not maybe not draft, but final draft of this bill. We can look at, we can go through it. We can even see all the details. December 11th, that is, and that's next Friday. That's when the government omnibus bill must pass or risk a government shutdown. Some people are saying there's still there's still a possibility we see an, an additional CR or continuing resolution that brings us into maybe the end of January or possibly sometime into February when the new administration would be in. Um, that's still a possibility, but most people want to just completely get this over with. They already agreed to the $1.4 trillion um, you know, package or budget amount, so now they just gotta work out some of the finer details. But again, hopefully that passes in a little bit over a week. Uh, also on December 11th, that's when Congress wants to pass the stimulus package as well. They would like to combine it, and make the omnibus bill and the stimulus package one bill and combine both of them. But again, we'll just have to wait and see if that actually happens. Also on December 11th, this is a big day. The House of Representatives after December 11th goes home. They go on recess for the rest of the year. They'll come back to Washington on January 6th. And December 14th, this is when the Electoral College meets and will vote on the next president. Based on all reports, based on what we kind of know, if we don't, if we don't look into fraud cases, okay, which everybody should, everybody should take you know both sides into perspective. But if it's just what we know based off who's winning these states currently, Joe Biden will be the winner. Um, so whether that happens on December 14th or not, we will have to wait and see. On December 18th, the Senate goes on recess. So this is another big day as well because the House can vote on, a, on all the stimulus, the, the package, do that on the 10th or 11th, and then it could actually get kicked back into the next week because the Senate would go on recess on, on December 18th, so they're a week behind. But based on what reports are kind of saying right now is that the House and the Senate would both prefer to go home early if possible. Hopefully we get something done before they try to go on recess because that would make a lot of people very mad. Most likely it would um, lead to more riots or riots actually. So December 26th, this is when unemployment expires for roughly 12 million Americans. The unemployment benefits for a lot of people to 39 weeks expires on December 26th. It's te technically uh, December 31st, but the way the unemployment weeks break down, it's actually the 26th, about five days early. So, you know, Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah, you just lost your benefits. That's, that's great. And then on December 31st, this is when multiple fiscal cliffs actually expire. The, uh, the, un the unemployment, obviously that expires, I just mentioned that, but also the, uh, your eviction moratorium from the CDC, that expires. And then the third one, 
is you have the student loan deferral that expires on December 31st as well, plus a bunch of other uh, things, but it's kind of what we know. So I know this wasn't a whole lot of new information, but the reason I wanted to provide this provide this kind of update with you guys is so that you know what's currently going on. I've you know, been doing three videos a day for the past, what, maybe this whole week. And I know it's a lot of updates, but there's a lot of stuff happening right now. A lot of big stuff. I just want to keep you, you know, informed. Make sure you're well aware of everything that's happening. So if you have any questions on any of this, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. Consider subscribing so I can, can continue to keep you updated on everything that's going on. And I'll see you guys on the next one.